Welcome to Nightline, the morning after, on ESPN 580 Orlando, WDBO, Night Nation's only call-in show, goes live now. All right, hello Night Nation, this is Andrew Fegley uh, coming to you from the 1148 studios and also the li- the live from the uh, ESPN uh, 580 Orlando studios Sam Albuquerque is back in the studio, and uh, Roger Nightbingle joins us by phone. Uh, we're brought to you by Chad Bar Law, raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Give Chad a call at 407-599-9036 for a free consultation, or visit chadbarlaw.com. You can give us a call if you want to, 844-225-5580 on the Dever team line to talk to us, 844 225 5580, or you can text at 21232, or you can reach me, AP underscore Nightline on Twitter. Roger, how you doing? Uh, ben couldn't be here this week because he is out of town. Happy Memorial Day weekend to everyone. Roger, how are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Coming to you from the um, Miramar Beach studios here, so hopefully this audio quality, trying a little uh, new hardware out, hopefully the audio is coming through clear. And excited to be here this weekend. It sounds great, uh, as far as I can tell. Sam, what about you? How are you doing? Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Just hanging out on a Sunday while all my friends are at the beach. I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We're all in the same boat here. Uh, we're not at the beach on the boat, but we are... Uh... Hey, Night Bangle sounds like he's at the beach, okay? He's at Miramar. I think there's a beach there. I am always at the beach. Are you kidding me? That's why uh, when I can't be in the studio, that's where I'm broadcasting from. All right. Sitting right by the water. Uh, Sitting on the dock of the bay, I guess. I don't know. Uh, So anyway, uh, Memorial Day weekend, obviously that's a big deal for a lot of people. So if you're listening, if you're driving, thank you for listening, obviously. We have some UCF news that we're going to talk about, obviously, uh, today, because this is a UCF show. And uh, we're going to play in the second segment the interview from last week that Scott Inez did on ESPN 580 Orlando with Danny White, the the athletic director, of course, for UCF, and had a little bit of news in that interview, at least, uh, you know, got to hear Danny White's opinion, uh, saying that he didn't really want to have football unless the fans could be there. Didn't really want to have a season this year unless the fans could be there. Uh, Roger, what was your initial uh, thoughts after hearing that? Well, um, I think he's he's making financial sense, right? Because if you have no fans there, there it opens up a whole host of, of problems. And, you know, in, in Danny's own words, it's a $30 million problem. So, that goes to show how much money it means to the university and the football program for us showing up. So guys, when we are able to go back, everybody needs to be there. That being said, uh, you know, questions like what does that do for student fees if students can't be there? You know, how do you manage if you do have an art- artificial capacity restriction? How do you manage that? Um, I think UCF's thinking, they released a, a budget report recently, uh, their CFO did this past week, and they're thinking and they're planning for uh, fans to be there. So to me, I think it's a, it's a financial question. He went into that a little bit. Uh, I think it's a, a question, obviously, for home game atmosphere. One of the, the nice things about the bounce house is when everybody's rocking, it's a really hard place to play. And uh, I think that shows in our record at home. Um, but to me, it's just, just Danny being real. I mean, a lot of these athletic directors, whether you're Ohio state and you've got $110 million in revenue coming in from the 105,000 fans or your UCF that has 30 million. Uh, there's some really significant implications there, uh, for the university, for the program. And I think it's just Danny being real. Okay, Sam, what was your initial thought? Uh, that was a long initial thought by the way, with Roger, but that's kind of how his brain works. It's uh, he has a lot of stuff going on in there. 
Yeah, I um, I kind of agree with Rog w- 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 with what Roger said. It's it's Danny being real. It's it's Danny looking at the financial situation of being in a non Power Five conference. The the TV deal isn't what the other conferences get. Like the SEC gets a lot more money from being on the TV. So schools like UCF and Cincinnati, I assume, and Memphis, I assume, rely heavily on the other revenues of 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 income and and ticket sales for UCF is something that has been I I think a pretty reliable uh source of income for this program for the past 3 or 4 years because practically we sell out every home game at least recently and at least last year I think so if if they're not having that revenue stream it it could put the program back a couple years and 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 I think Danny White understands that and understand how important the money is to keep building the program and keep recruiting and keep having these facilities so that you can continue the momentum to to get to a power 5 conference so you don't have to do that as much you get the the money from the the TV deals yeah well, uh, Danny White says a lot more in this interview than just that. That was just the thing that kind of made everybody's ears, you know, perk up. So uh, we're going to play that in the second segment. Like I said, it's a it's a about eleven minutes long, a little over. Uh, but it 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 just seems like you know the thing that that he said the I <laughs> I got to get my words together here. All right the. The thing for me, personally, um, with even the question of not having football is something that I don't want to hear. Uh, And and I know that we've been talking about this. It's been talked about. There's certain schools out there that have said pretty much already, you know, oh, it doesn't look like there's there's athletic directors. I think one of the ones in Texas – said that that he thought that it was a little bit crazy to even have a football schedule this week or this year uh this week there was some uh discussion with the ncaa i believe or last week uh, about uh you know with the players getting back they can come back supposedly you know and get things going i just i still worry about uh an entire season being lost if we don't have football or going to the spring or whatever, it's going to have eligibility issues with people. It's going to have all kinds of, of, uh, you know, last lasting effects. I think, I think this entire thing, if it doesn't go on as scheduled, will have lasting effects through college football and not only for UCF, but for all kinds of other schools. Uh, the money is a huge deal. Uh, th- that's a s- really scary thing. Uh, you know, a $30 million deficit that you might have because you don't have fans or you don't have football at all. The players have, have all talked about how they, uh, you know, r- really love to play with fans I- in the building, obviously, because if you don't, I think it was Dylan Gabriel that said, if you don't, it feels like a scrimmage uh, out there if, if you don't have any fans. Uh, so that whole thing, as far as I'm concerned, is a little bit scary. Even the thought of that still, I'm going through with my mindset is somehow, some way by the time that football is supposed to start, which is the beginning of September, hopefully we will be back in line with all of this, all of this COVID stuff to do things fairly normally. There may be masks. There may be a little bit of social distancing. I am starting to hate that word, social distancing. And I really hate the word new normal. I can't stand it. I hate it when people say that. Because I want the old normal. Uh, This thing has kind of been proven uh, through statistics and everything else to really uh, be... Not as as big of a deal as, as it was played out to be, um, and I'm hoping that all of this, you know, I'm hoping that we can get back to normal. Roger, you got anything on that? Well, no, I think uh, I think your initial opening thought was as long as mine on that one, <laughs> but uh, but no, well, I'm I agree the host. With you. It's I supposed mean... to be. uh no but i mean i agree with you i mean i I do think we're going to have football uh this year and um you know i i can't really speak to the medical side you have a better insight to that than i do but from a a college football side 
I, I don't see any way that we're not going to have a season. Um, what it looks like, who's playing, when they're playing, what does a championship look like? Um, you know, I, I don't think that that's even in question at this point. So um, as far as the fans being in the stands, absolutely 100%. I think, I think it hurts uh, engagement. And I do think, you know, for the players, that's a, that's a big piece that's missing. So, you know, I, I just, I, I feel like we're going to be there. How many people are, the, are going to be there when they're going to be there? Um, who knows? But at this point, I, I do think that, that we're going to play football. And I do think there'll be fans of the stands at some point. Sam, you're more in tune with the rest of the world as far as college football and sports. I really concentrate on on knowing stuff about UCF. What have you heard in the, in the, or seen in the national news recently about the football season with with other schools recently? Yeah, you you hear a lot of optimism, especially in in other sports now about coming back but it's it's all with the caveat of no fans or limited fans or trying to figure out a way to 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 make it safe for a lesser number of fans and to me it's from a fan perspective and, you, and you're talking about UCF for me it's college football is all about the student and all about the fan and all about the booster and, and the community that it builds around because as much as we all love college football you uh me uh Night Bangle, we we can objectively say that the product on the field isn't as good as the pros. It's the atmosphere that's built around being connected to a program like UCF, a, a program we all graduated from. So from that aspect, I think what you guys are talking about is really important. But you also have to look at the fact that these are kids that aren't getting compensated the way that most of or so, a lot of people think they should. And when it comes down to that, like when you talk about pro players, these guys in the NBA are making millions and millions of dollars. So there's an incentive to put yourself at risk uh, to, you know, to make that sort of money. There's, there's a reward essentially for the risk that comes with it. With these college kids, it's not as guaranteed. Like, sure, there's a reward, but it's down the road and it's, and it's a degree and it's something that isn't as perceived as, valuable to to a lot of society so i think college itself the perception of it is going to be a lot harder to cross the finish line than professional sports and especially football and especially in in big programs like you know ohio state that has the horseshoe that fits one hundred and five thousand people we're not going to get i don't think this season based on what i've heard um from ohio state ad uh, gene smith i think his name is uh came out and, and, and said something along the lines of they don't think that that it's gonna it's gonna be normal for a little while so i i think i think that's the perspective we have to look at the lens of of college sports it's these the the kids lives are a lot more I don't, I don't know how to how to how to put it on the dot it's it's a lot less willing to take the risk of it i think from a lot of different perspectives and i think uh the ad's and the and the president of the ncaa are going to take a very measured approach when returning and especially when it comes to fans and especially when it comes to playing playing on the field here all righty yeah uh i understand that a bit and and i'm one of those people that do- doesn't agree with with the college football compensation thing. Uh, I played college football. I got a degree for it. I I learned a lot of life valuable lessons. So I'm one of the guys that was happy with that. I I, I didn't need to be paid to play college football. Um, I would have played in this situation in a heartbeat. Like it would never have even crossed my mind not going out onto the football uh, field because of a virus. Uh, and and especially not wanting to play in front of fans, uh, so I, I understand that. I understand that that people, you know, think that college football players should be paid more than than a uh, a scholarship and, and life lessons. But I'm not one of those guys, so uh, <laughs> we can talk about that. Uh, no, and I, I don't bring that up to to have the argument about college football and and college sports and and compensating college athletes. Like we can have that discussion some other day. My point yeah. is more along the lines of there is a clear reward for putting your you know your health at risk for professional athletes. Whereas there as, is as, a lot more money. Yeah, you yeah, exactly. Correct. That's that's yeah. that's more more along the lines of what I'm saying here. Yeah. Whereas where college athletes who have more or less control over their financial stability. 
it it becomes more difficult to make that decision. I think for for a kid especially. Right. Well, well if you look age, at this I disease mean, as well, uh, the other thing is that it doesn't affect nearly nearly as many uh, people in the in the age group of college football. So I think that should be a factor as well. Uh, it affects people much older. The the median age, I believe, in Florida at least, is like fifty five. Uh, and, and then if you you go much p- uh, farther down in the statistics than that, the college age students are pretty low uh, as far as you know contracting and and especially dying from this disease. So. Uh, you know, I don't know how much of a factor that makes. I've heard things about the NFL, uh, you know, making a special face mask, stuff like that. Who knows uh, what could come out of this? But, uh, you know, other schools, they're talking about as college football as a whole could lose upwards of four billion billion with a B. Uh, that's a lot of money for uh, college sports and sports in general, $4 billion. Um, University systems already have, uh, you know, suffered hundreds of millions of dollars of losses already with all this, with with college basketball and and all the rest of the sports, baseball. Baseball is not huge at UCF, but it is at at other schools, and, and, you know, they didn't have a season at all. All right, so we're going to take a break. We're going to be back with Danny White on Scott Inez uh, from earlier in the week, and uh, we'll see you after that, and we'll come back and talk about all this uh, on Nightline the morning after. and Wingo. The majority of players want to find a way to play. Knowing that there are going to be some risks because yes, they want to get paid. That's why people want to go back to work. Players want to go back to play because this is how they make their money and it's a hell of a lot of money. Let, let's not kid anybody. They will be more apt to lean toward a a reason to play than a reason to not. Golick and Wingo, weekdays from 6 to 10 on ESPN 580 Orlando. Night Nation, this is Adam, one half of the dynamic duo that is the Sons of UCF, which is found only on the Nightline Sports Network. Join UCF Mike and I each week as we bring you some of the latest from in and around UCF sports, including such great segments as the Josh Heupel Translator, Top 8 Lists, and Cow of the Week. We'll also bring you some of the most in-depth and unique interviews with some of your favorite former Knights. You don't want to miss a moment, so make sure you subscribe to the Nightline Sports Network wherever you get your podcasts, and we'll take care of the rest. Go Knights! Charge on! More than ever, healthcare workers, EMTs, and law enforcement heroes deserve some love. Help support your favorite restaurants in feeding frontline heroes today. Make a donation to Restaurant Partners Helping Heroes. Just search RPHH in Facebook and click the Donate Here link. It'll take you to the RPHH GoFundMe page. Every little bit helps. Please search RPHH in Facebook now and click the Donate Here link to give. Help feed the heroes that are helping us all. Spice up your company with homemade marketing services from Tasty Gravy Creative. Tasty Gravy serves up a menu of budget-friendly marketing, graphic design, and public relations services customized to your specific goals. Co-owned by a UCF graduate, Tasty Gravy can help refresh your brand, strengthen your online presence, or reinforce your company's message. Contact Tasty Gravy for help with your website, social media, marketing, advertising materials, and more. Visit TastyGravy.com. Raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney is our commitment to you at Chad Bar Law. I'm Chad Barr, and as a UCF alum, I am proud to present Nightline, the morning after show, Central Florida's only call-in show dedicated to our UCF nights every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And remember, if you or a loved one are injured in an auto accident, call us at 407-599-9036 to schedule your free consultation or visit us at chadbarlaw.com. Our clients come to us in need and leave us family. Offices Altamont Springs. Go Knights. Charge on. Coming up on Monday, a cavalcade of the best guests to hang with you on your holiday. Laura Rutledge, Mark. Marty Smith and Ryan McGee on college football. Buster only on when baseball could return. Plus Michael Collins, Ariel Helwani, and more. Monday, Golik and Wingo. Beginning at 6, right here on ESPN 580 Orlando and on FM 96.5 HD2. And now, 
Back to Nightline, the morning after, on ESPN 580 Orlando, WDBO. Call now at 844-225-5580 or text at 21232. All right, that's right. This is Nightline the morning after, and we are live from the 1148 studios, from the ESPN 580 Orlando studios, from the Miramar, Florida studios, everywhere. We're live everywhere. Uh, We're live on your radio right now. Uh, Brought to you by Chad Bar Law, raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Give Chad a call, 407-599-9036 for a free consultation, or visit chadbarlaw.com. Chad will take care of you. All right, I talked about this interview with Danny White on Scott Inez's show uh, earlier this week. He's on ESPN uh, 580 every afternoon, and uh, he was gracious enough to let us use this. Uh, So here is Danny White on uh, ESPN 580 from earlier in the week, athletic director for UCF, Danny White. He is Danny White. Danny, are you there, my man? I am. I am. Good afternoon. <laughs> right. I appreciate you having me on. But I, was, oh, I was man. wonder if you really wanted me on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you staying there, man. Again, we had a power surge. Nikki Football just collapsed there in the studio. We had a power surge a couple of hours ago, and and I apologize for uh, for not no being worries. able to get to you here in the last 10 minutes, but we got you on now. Um. How you doing, man? How, how's the family doing? Everybody okay through this pandemic? Yeah, everybody's good. You know, the kids are ready to kill each other, but uh, <laughs> it's been good, good, good family time. And uh, uh, the, the homeschooling thing's been interesting, but uh, I, I, we got nothing to complain about in our house. And just uh, hope hope everybody's safe and, and, and healthy for the most part. Mm, amen to that, brother. Well, it, it is a unique time in our history, a crazy time in college sports. Um, you know, we, we've seen a number of schools, East Carolina, announcing uh, slashing of programs, and I don't know how many they're going to slash. So we'll probably hear about that tomorrow. Cincinnati with men's soccer, uh, other group of five schools cutting baseball, FIU track. I mean, what what do you make of all that that's going on in the collegiate athletic world right now, Danny? I, I think it's. I mean, you said it well. It's an interesting time. The time I think we'll we'll all remember. I, I hope that you know. It's, what we've spent a lot of time thinking about and sometimes crisis prevents provides opportunity. And, uh, as, as much as college athletics is, is just an, an awesome part of our society, uh, college football in particular is, you know, so tradition rich. Sometimes we, we, we don't necessarily progress, uh, as maybe corporate America would professional leagues would. So maybe this is an opportunity for us to come out on the back end of this, uh, in a better form than, than we currently are. Hmm. Uh, I, I just hope that uh, that we can get through it and put it in the rear, rear view mirror. That's what we're expecting. We're, we're maintaining a pretty positive outlook and uh, just trying to make the right decisions for our student athletes and for the best interest as we get closer to the season, obviously for our fans. Well, that's interesting because we've been talking about college sports for a number of weeks now here on the show and that better look. And what what is do, do you know what that better look would look like in the future? Do you know what a, a change college athletics landscape would look like in the future, Danny? You know, I think that there's uh, certainly, I mean, it's been pretty vocal for the last several years about having a real postseason. That'd mm-hmm. be helpful in, in college football. Uh, and I think that perhaps this could be an impetus for that. With uh, there's, there's already, with the economic realities of this, there's already going to be a need for more resources. And, if it gets worse, that need will only get become greater. So we'll see how that plays out. But I'd love to see the playoff expanded. I'd love to see Power Five become Power Six. I think that's that's the reality. Uh, and uh, and I think there's a huge opportunity to to make it a more inclusive sport. Uh, for you know, UCF, we have 16 sports, so uh, I, I want to make sure that we're protecting kind of the sanctity. And I think that it is really special. The intercollegiate athletics model. It's what makes our system of higher ed, in my opinion, the best in the world. Uh, it's, a, it's a very successful proven marketing engine for high-level universities in, in our country, and, and uh, it's a, the feeder program to the Olympics, which is a huge point of pride for, for our country. So I hope that uh, the, the, the sport cutting you mentioned, while it may be a necessity at some institutions, I hope it doesn't become a widespread thing that we all sprint to. I think we got to protect what's a really cool model mm-hmm. and look for ways where we can be more efficient, uh, not just financially, but also in terms of what that student athlete experience looks like uh, and, and how we can best 
position our programs to be uh, as competitive as we want them to be. And at UCF, we have a lot of Olympic sports that can compete nationally, and I've shown that, whether it's RPI rankings or uh, uh, successful runs in the NCAA tournament. We have a lot of our sports in the top 25, and, and we want to be able to continue to build on that and, and compete on the national stage. Danny White, UCF Athletic Director here on ESPN Afternoons with Scott Inez. And you mentioned the 16 sports at UCF. Danny, and I mentioned earlier the fact that there are a number of schools out there slashing different sports. What 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 about you? Do you expect any cuts in, in sports at UCF due to this pandemic and, and the crisis that's ensued? Uh, well, first, we're at the minimum. Mm-hmm. The NCAA rule requires you have to have at least 16 for the – uh, FBS level of Division One, the highest level of, of college athletics. Um, but even if that rule changed, that's that's not something we would sprint to. We we would again tr- we try to be more efficient with what we have. Uh, we we worked really hard for the last few years to build up our budget. And what we're talking about is looking at this as, as more of a strategic pause. How do we protect the infrastructure that's given us so much momentum? We we're on track for our best year competitively by far. We finished the fall season. 29th in the country in the all sport rankings and we started off our spring sports was our best start ever softball was number seven in the rpi when the season stopped baseball was number 12 both tennises were number 17 uh, so every single one of our sports is competing at a really high level and we're proud of that and we want to keep building on it yeah i mean these as we said these are unprecedented times i know the commissioners of the the G5 schools sent that letter to the NCAA requesting some sort of relief from the requirements for up to four years. I'm not on this thing every day like you are, man, but I look at this request and go, yeah, I mean, that's, that's just common sense. The NBA needs to loosen the grip on a lot of these regulations. What are your thoughts about that? You know, I, I, I don't really look at us as a G5 program. I look at us as a, as a power program. we, we We've grown our budget by 50% in the last four years. We're, we were scheduled to be about a $74 million budget, which is just a world away and different than you know, 90% of the, the schools that, uh, that, that, that you're talking about in the G5. So we, we have, while we're trying to build our resource base to the P5 level, and certainly having a P5 TV deal would, would be helpful with that, uh, we have a, a different, a unique, I think, set of challenges. There's probably only a few athletic departments in our position where uh, we're, we don't have that P5 TV dollars, but we do have a huge fan base, and that's allowed us to, to build our budget up. Uh, so we're, we're, we all have challenges, even the biggest budget in, budgets in the country in college sports. Everybody's got challenges going through this pandemic, but our challenges are different than, than the vast majority of, of, of the G5. And we've seen those challenges in the Power Five, if you will. I think I saw Will Muschamp, the uh, the head football coach at South Carolina, taking a pay cut, 10% pay cut. Uh, Missouri is the only other SEC school to do something like that, at least right now. Do you foresee any pay cuts on down the line with, with your staff out there at UCF, Danny? You know, our staff, our leadership, our head coaches, we're all really passionate about what we're doing. We believe in what we're doing, as do our donors. So we're, we're going to do whatever we need to do proactively to, to protect the infrastructure we've built and come out on the back end of this, hopefully nine to ten months from now, getting back to being as, as aggressive uh, and uh, get our momentum going at, at the same level it's been for the last several years. So I uh, don't know what that means yet. We're part of a bigger university that's also part of a bigger system across the whole state of Florida. So the one to jump out ahead of, of those things. Uh, but we're, we're assessing anything we can do uh, to, to be efficient during this period of pause, uh, just be smart about what I don't want is, is the economic challenges from COVID-19 to create something that we're having to climb out of for several years. You know, we've, we've accomplished so much in the last few years and building a national brand and becoming so competitive, uh, that we want to be smart right now. Uh, so this time next year, we're off and sprinting again. Athletic director at UCF, Danny White, kind enough to join us here on ESPN Afternoons with Scott Inez. What about a college football season ahead, Danny? Do you see it playing out this year? And if so, what does it look like? Is it with fans? Is it without fans? Is it socially distanced fans? I mean, what what does that look like right now for you, Danny? I think a big part of what makes college football special is the pageantry of uh, everything that happens on campus on game day, you know, even the things that happen four or five hours before the game, the tailgating and uh, all the traditions that we do. 
so I'd, I'd hate to see us play games without those things happening. And so hopefully we're in a position come end of August, early September, where it's safe to do that. Obviously, we're going to have to change some of what we do and make sure that it's it's a clean and safe environment. Uh, but if it's not, I, I, I'd hope that we, we look to postpone it before we look to play games without fans. Mm. Um, from, a, from a mission standpoint, it's why we built an on-campus stadium, the student experience, certainly the experience for our student athletes to play in front of all those fans. There's a lot of things that make it special. But financially, our, our reality is that's about a $30 million problem for us if we play uh, football games and realize our TV revenue. But for us, the, the, the huge chunk is, is the game day revenue. And, uh, so it, I, I don't have an answer for a $30 million problem. And I think some of the uh, more tradition-rich, you know, 80 to 100,000 seat stadiums, more, st- more established athletic departments, they got a bigger problem than 30. They probably have a $100 million problem. So sure. uh, I would hope that we look to postpone it later in the fall or even in the spring before we uh, get real serious about talking about playing uh, without fans in the stands. Mm. Danny White, athletic director at UCF here on ESPN Afternoons with Scott Inez. The NFL is looking into some sort of special covering that would go over the face mask, um, and, and the idea being to protect these players from contracting the virus. Is there any talk in college football, if we do move forward with the season, Danny, is there any talk about some sort of you know extra safety equipment for the upcoming year for these kids? Uh, I, I have not been a part of any conversations like that. I, Scott, I like to take pride in knowing what I don't know, and yeah. I don't know an awful lot. I, sure. I, like, I like to leave those conversations to our, our team docs. I'll actually be meeting with uh, with Dr. Mike Jablonski uh, tomorrow afternoon, Orlando Health. And he's our director of sports medicine. and they've been working really hard on different things we need to be thinking about from a protocol standpoint to bring student-athletes back to campus. Uh, the NCAA just – um, approved voluntary workouts to begin again June 1. So we're trying to see what that means for us and how we can do that safely. And, and then as we get uh, beyond that, start to look towards the season. That if the doctors and the scientists think that that's helpful, then it's obviously something that we should we should explore to make sure our student athletes are safe. Well, Danny, I know you've got a meeting here in a few minutes, so we'll let you go. I thank you so much for uh, for staying on the line. Uh, I know there are good times ahead. I'm not sure when those days will be, but they will be back. And I know these are difficult days with difficult decisions. But I, I appreciate you taking time out, Danny. We'll chat soon. Thank you, buddy. No question, Scott. Thanks for having me. And I, I think uh, we're right around the corner. We're, we're, we're close to getting back to being what doing what we do. And I can't wait to see everybody at games in the fall. All right, that was Danny White, and he was on uh, ESPN 580 Orlando with Scott Inez earlier in the week. Uh, Thank you to Scott Inez for letting us play that great interview there. Uh, We'll be back on Nightline the morning after to talk about what we heard there a little bit more uh, in just a couple of minutes. I'm Jeff Allen. Join me each and every week on the Nightline Sports Network for the AAC Report. We bring you in-depth coverage of each school in football, basketball, baseball, softball, soccer, golf, tennis, and more, as well as bring you insider interviews and focus in on the biggest games and news of the week. That's all right here each week on the AAC Report, only on the Nightline Sports Network. Cox Media Group is open, and we want to know if you are too. Our lives have changed, and our business community is adjusting to meet your needs in a safe and convenient way. Support local businesses, big and small. Here's today's list of businesses that are open. Home Paramount Pest Control, RoofClaim.com, Ladybird Academy, NewlandLaw.com, Sunstate Ford. If your business is still open, let Cox Media Group know at WeAreOpenOrlando.com. That's we, A-R-E, OpenOrlando.com. Together, we will get through this. Hey, this is Travis Dever, Kai's Real Estate, the Dever Team, New Smyrna Beach. Your source for real estate and everything else, New Smyrna Beach. Proud sponsor of Nightline and Nightline Post Game Live. Call me anytime at 386-690-1636. That's 386-690-1636. Let me show you my hometown, New Smyrna Beach, UCF's favorite beach. Go Knights and charge on. Raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney is our commitment to you at Chad Bar Law. 
I'm Chad Barr, and as a UCF alum, I am proud to present Nightline, the morning after show, Central Florida's only call-in show dedicated to our UCF nights every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And remember, if you or a loved one are injured in an auto accident, call us at 407-599-9036 to schedule your free consultation or visit us at chadbarlaw.com. Our clients come to us in need and leave as family. Offices Altamont Springs. Go Knights. Charge on. Whether it's on AM 580, FM 96.5 HD2, Alexa, or Google Home, we are everywhere you hear audio. ESPN 580 Orlando, Orlando's home for the biggest events in sports. And now, back to Nightline, the morning after, on ESPN 580 Orlando, WDBO. Call now at 844-225-5580 or text at 21232. All right, back on Nightline the morning after. This is Andrew Fegley, and I'm coming to you from the 1148 studios. Sam Albuquerque is in the ESPN 580 Orlando studios, and Roger Knight Bingle is on the beach in Miramar uh, talking to us on the phone. We're brought to you by Chad Bar Law, raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Give Chad a call, 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com. If you want, you can give us a call, 844-225-5580 on the Dever team line, uh, or you can send us a text, 21232, uh, and uh, reach me at AP underscore Nightline on Twitter. All right, so we just heard from Danny White on... uh, all this stuff and, and trying to get football back uh, earlier in the week, Scott Inez did that interview. Uh, I, I took some notes on some things that, uh, that I, that I liked that he said and, and some stuff that, that I kind of didn't know that he said actually. Uh, so one of the things, obviously he's trying to keep a positive outlook like the rest of us are um, a quote, here a real postseason uh would love to see the power six uh that's one of the things that that all of us as ucf fans would really like the power six for that to be a a real thing for uh ucf to be included or even the american to be included in the power five make it the power six this is one thing that that I guess uh, has been discussed a lot as far as over the last couple of weeks. What if some of these uh, teams or schools from co- different conferences elect not to play or can't play? Uh, people are gonna uh, schools are gonna have to fill their schedules. Uh, conferences are gonna have to fill their schedules. Could. UCF or, or other teams have a chance to be included in, could there be a, a realignment, uh, e- even just a temporary realignment? You never know. Uh, Roger, what do you think about that concept? Well, I think, I think we already know that a lot of the Pac-12 schools right, uh, right now are not going to play. Alabama, uh, for example, had a game schedule with, I believe, USC, and uh, they've already looked for other options. So as far as it opening the door for us, uh, this is something we briefly mentioned in past shows. I absolutely think it could open up the door. I think for us, you know, a lot of the schools that we want to play, at least in the, in the SEC and, and in our surrounding area, I'm not sure there's going to be any, as many openings there, but any schools that have openings with West Coast schools, uh, some Northeast schools, um, I, I think there is an opportunity for us to open the door on on what we've got going on. I mean, you've got Temple, for example, in the Northeast in our conference. Um, and, and as far as uh, the Power Six kind of conversation, I do think it could help us from a perception perspective as well. I mean, do we get the tag like BYU does to count it as a P5 game? I mean, there are so many different things that go along with that. I do think it, it, it may open opportunities for schools in our conference. I'm not sure yet on UCF because it's really going to depend on our schools um, and what they do and whether there's some alignment elsewhere. Yeah. Well, 
uh, we're supposed to play uh, Temple on Saturday, November 14th. If Temple does not play football, that's an open date for us. So, right. uh, you know, Cincinnati is another one. You never know uh, with Cincinnati. Uh, in Ohio there, I'm not sure, you know, what their situation is. I know that they've had issues uh, financially. They, they cut men's soccer. They were one of the very first ones to cut uh, – you know, a, uh, a sport. So who knows what their football season could look like? I haven't heard anything from, from these guys. We've heard from Danny white. Thank goodness about uh, some of this stuff. Uh, let me look through my notes here again. He mentioned the importance of, co- of college sports in general. And we talked a little bit about that being a $4 billion problem. If there's a problem, uh, with playing football, that's a big deal. Uh, and he mentioned as a feeder for the Olympics, a lot of people don't think about the Olympic sports in college being really a feeder for the actual Olympic games. That's that's the thing that, that you don't hear a lot of people talk about, but it is. And and that was kind of a thing that got my ear. And, and Danny White sees the big picture. This is what I love about this guy. Uh, just, you know, sees stuff that maybe you don't think about. Uh, does not want to cut sports at UCF. UCF has the minimum of 16 for Division I, uh, and we were on track for the best spring ever at UCF, which we all know. Uh, baseball, we've talked about many, many times, was uh, doing very well. Uh, softball was obviously going to do well, and, uh, you know, uh, it, just a bad time for all this to happen in general. Uh, but for a bad time for a great spring happening for UCF. Sam, any uh, thoughts on that? Uh, I did have a thought on on the scheduling uh, conversation that we're having here. Is there any way we can get Florida A and M off the schedule and then get Alabama on the schedule? Is that okay? Can we can we just establish Danny White should do that? I am all for that. If if yeah, if Danny White's listening. You know, we really should look at something else besides Florida A and M. Although I would like to see Florida A and M's band. That's, that's true, that's but you whole... can just go to the Orlando Classic and you can see them and Bethune Cookman's band Are two they for playing one. There. The Orlando Classic? I mean, uh, maybe, is maybe that not. Even a thing? Is They'll that stream it. I think yet? they'll stream it on the or internet the... somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, July has been canceled everywhere. You yeah, know, all these things being canceled is killing me. But all jokes aside, talking about uh, the scheduling thing, um, I am serious a little bit about this. Like, is there a way if these opportunities do arise, you see an Alabama cancel a game versus USC because they the USC can't travel or can't play in California or wherever the neutral site game is? Would do you guys think uh, UCF would be willing to you know pay off a a, a Florida A and M or a a lesser squad? I don't know what the uh, what the schedule looks like right now to to essentially skip that game to fill in a a team like Alabama or fill in a a big time opponent to make that leap and 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 try to take advantage of some of these schools not being able to compete like you know say USC or in Oregon because of their state laws and and maybe opening a spot in the uh, uh, college football playoff. That would be wonderful on from my side. I mean, I would hope that that they would look at something like that if the situation arose. Obviously, um, that would be great. And I mean, you never know what's going to happen. We still don't know about half of what is going to happen next week, let alone in another couple of months. So this is a fluid situation still with uh, with the way that governors are, are doing things and everything else. I'm not going to get political here, but it's a sports show. Um, but things are different in different states. I know that, that Florida is looking pretty good right now, but you never know. Uh, and we mentioned the Pac-12 schools. Roger, you got anything? Yeah, I mean, with the, with the Pac-12 schools, pretty much all of them have already said I mean, uh, that they are going to shut down. I mean, Mountain West is being affected by this as well. Uh, the state of California has um, pretty much said that nobody's coming back for the fall classes. So, again, that grows that argument where you've got the NCAA commissioner saying, hey, if you don't have classes on campus, you really shouldn't be playing. And the state of California isn't going to move off of that. And you've got uh, other states that have a different purview. Um, you know, but for me – 
you've got the American right now, the ACC and the SEC are the only three conferences, conferences that have working medical groups to come up with plans to accommodate both fans and players. So that tells you where their head's at, right? So I see them playing. Uh, when you look from a budgetary perspective, he told us that it was a $74 million budget that they were participating. If you do cut $30 million off the top, now you're talking a $44 million budget. So with your expenses and everything you're looking at, that's a big deal. Money talks. Money talks in expansion. Money talks in, in any to- a topic around college football. I mean, when you're talking about the P5, P6 narrative, same thing. It's a, it was about money. That was the excuse, right? Um, so if – if you have states that are not playing, I 100% think that if there's an opportunity, Danny White jumps all over an Alabama game if he can get it. You buy that game, you buy that game out it, it, if for no other reason, um, but you have that strength of schedule argument in a uh, in a season where potentially you may not even pay, play a full schedule. They're talking about cutting conference games down to ten or, or entire seasons down to ten. So. You get every deal that you can, and, of course, it'll be a better payday for you, especially if there's no fans. So uh, at the end of the day, uh, I I do think um, all of this ties in. I do think, like you said, it's a wild card. It's very fluid. You know, there's there's other medical considerations that there's a second wave that they've been talking about. So what does that do to fall football? And then the the flip side of that is, and, and, and the argument he made is, he would rather wait for spring football if that means that there's fans in the stands and then you've got people like Dan Walken saying, well, there's just as likely as a chance it'll be in fall and spring. What's the difference? They're not going to be there. I, I don't necessarily agree with that. But at the end of the day, it's about money. It's about butts and seats. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That is the thing. The the the, the $74 million budget uh, that he mentioned, that's – that's a lot of money, uh, and he said our challenges are different than most of the G5, which I thought was interesting as well, and I believe uh, to be the case. All right, we're going to take a little bit of a break here, and we'll be right back on Nightline the morning after. and Wingo. The majority of players want to find a way to play. Knowing that there are going to be some risks because yes, they want to get paid. That's why people want to go back to work. Players want to go back to play because this is how they make their money and it's a hell of a lot of money. Let's not kid anybody. They will be more apt to lean toward a a reason to play than a reason to not. Golick and Wingo weekdays from 6 to 10 on ESPN 580 Orlando. These days, the whole world is on the Internet 24-7, on their phones, at work, even at the dinner table. It's the Internet all the time. So why, when it's time to sell your home, does your traditional agent charge you 6% to list it on the MLS to other agents instead of targeting buyers directly online? That's why Rex was born. For a fee starting at 2%, Rex sells your home where buyers are looking, online, optimized by data-driven marketing, not the MLS. To get started, visit sellwithrex.com. That's sellwithrex.com. With Rex, selling or buying a home has never been easier. Price your home, get a virtual consultation, visit online open houses and showings, all from the comfort of your home with a few clicks of a button. Want to learn more? Visit sellwithrex.com or just use your phone and call 833-REX-HOME. 833-REX-HOME. That's 833-739-4663. License number CQ1057788. Minimum fee may apply. Rex fully supports the principles of the Fair Housing Act and Equal Opportunity Act. We are America Strong, and at Newbleton Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, we are driving America forward because reverse is not an option. Our showrooms are open, and now at Napleton, we have no payments for up to six months and 0% interest for up to 72 months on most models. And for the first time ever, employee pricing on Jeep Wranglers and Gladiators. So let's drive America forward. Forward. Napleton Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. Reverse is not an option. Online at NapletonCJD.com. See NapletonCJD.com for full program details. Golick and Wingo. The majority of players want to find a way to play. Knowing that there are going to be some risks because, yes, they want to get paid. That's why people want to go back to work. Players want to go back to play because this is how they make their money, and it's a hell of a lot of money. Let's not kid anybody. They will be more apt to 
to lean toward a a reason to play than a reason to not. Golick and Wingo, weekdays from 6 to 10 on ESPN 580 Orlando. And now, back to Nightline, the morning after, on ESPN 580 Orlando, WDBO. Call now at 844-225-5580 or text at 21232. All right, we are back on Nightline the morning after, live from the ESPN 580 Orlando studios, the 1148 studios, and Miramar studios there in uh, Miramar, Florida, for Roger Nightbingle that's on the phone. Sam Albuquerque is back in the ESPN 580 Orlando studios. We are brought to you by Chad Bar Law, raising the bar on what to expect from your personal injury attorney. Give Chad a call, 407-599-9036 for a free consultation or visit chadbarlaw.com. Chad Bar will take care of you. You got anything, issues with uh, personal injury or or anything else, uh, Chad Bar will take care of you or find somebody else that will uh, if you got an issue. Uh, Roger, I wanted to talk about recruiting a little bit. We have a new commitment uh, from a player, Kale Sanders Jr., from New Cheney, Texas, 5'11", 175, running back. Uh, I watched his tape earlier today. Uh, I My notes are uh, that he's a shifty runner, uh, is not so twitchy, but runs really fast and smart and sees the lane. Runs hard, plays much bigger uh, than his size. That's my, that's what I got just watching uh, what he had. He's got offers from UCF, Colorado State, Fresno State, Houston, Louisiana, New Mexico, Sam Houston, Texas State, Texas Tech, uh, University of Texas, San Antonio, and uh, Utah. Yeah, I uh, I was able to check out his tape as well. Uh, one thing that kind of struck me initially when I was watching him was he runs really tall, kind of like Latavius Murray, uh, Murray used to. Uh, he's a multi-position star. He plays both sides of the ball, which for me and a running back, I love. He plays DB and running back. Um, I love when you have someone that's willing to hit hard, that's uh, hit someone hard, is willing to hit the hole. So, the way, the way he was used primarily was uh, in single back sets. Um, they were setting him up uh, to run to east-west and then make a one cut and run north. So he had some speed. He, he did show some wiggle. Uh, not too many runs up the middle, although it, he did have those when he was uh, running wildcat formation. Uh, he definitely, once he got, once he broke through the hole, he definitely got loose. Had a, he has a really quick burst and a quick step, and I know we usually talk about that for linemen, but it's for running backs too. So when he gets, uh, when he gets out in a little bit of space on the, on um, outside the tackles, uh, you know he can really turn on the jets, and he sees a hole and he goes. Um, uh, he uh, he he had a great last season. Ran for a thousand yards on 112 carries had averaged 8.62 yards per carry and had 16 touchdowns. So uh, kid is solid, um, loved his tape. Uh, he's, he's, I would have loved to see more inside game, considering that's kind of like what Hypo likes to run. But I've even read some comparisons with him with Adrian. Obviously, there, um, there's a difference in size there, but just the way that they cut and they run and they make people miss. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anything else from recruiting news this week at all, Roger? Yeah, keep an eye on uh, another kid named Zay Franks. Uh, he's pretty active on social media, so you may have seen him retweeting a lot of UCF stuff uh, recently. He's a 2021 receiver out of Mississippi, three-star. In 2019, he had 1,000 yards receiving, uh, averaged 14.3 yards per carry, and 70 uh, catches with 13 touchdowns has a uh, really, uh, really decent speed and good yards after the catch. So he, he was, uh, he got a lot of underneath routes uh, where he would post up, uh, grab the ball and then make people miss long-term. He had uh, uh, some really good high pointed uh, high point catches where he's uh, going up and getting the ball over defenders. Um, he needs some work on, on his route running, but outside of that, 
Um, he's really, really solid. Uh, he's really solid. Uh, Cameron Ransom, uh, another QB recruit. We've kind of mentioned him on Twitter before, but things seem to be heating up with him as well. He's six one two zero one dual threat QB who earned an offer in January 2019, and he actually uh, he had we were one of his earliest offers, and as a result of that, he was actually able to visit on campus in October. Uh, Zay Franks, though, is a, is a huge name to keep an eye on. Uh, he's one that we're definitely in the mix for and seems to be really high on us right now. All righty. Well, we will uh, obviously be talking more and more about recruiting as time goes on as well. I think that that's kind of been a little bit on hold as well with the NCAA and, uh, and everybody else uh, with recruiting in COVID-19. That has definitely put a little bit of a damper on that, but I think we'll be fine. Uh, UCF uh, has normally come through pretty good uh, in the end, and it's it's pr- still fairly early to, to be doing this recruiting stuff since the season has not uh, you know come through yet. Uh, we haven't done that yet, so still have a lot of time. Uh, Sam, any final thoughts for today? Yeah, um, I think... As much as we we look at the landscape of of sports and and not really knowing what's going to happen the next you know month or so or even tomorrow everything might change but it looks like we'll we'll have sports at some point this summer and and if we have it in the summer and it goes all well and I think the fall football schedule in college and in the pros are probably going to happen it might be without fans but. I'd rather watch the games on TV than not at all. So that's I'm I'm looking at it like that. So I'm I'm relatively positive positive about it. All right, Roger. Extremely quickly, final thought. Yeah, i just gonna mention that uh, the one good thing about um, you know voluntary workouts coming back in June that may open the opportunity for recruiting visits again, uh, voluntary recruiting visits. So I'm excited about that. And uh, lastly, quick thought: uh, Danny White recommends airboat rides. So just want everybody to know that. <laughs> Where did that come from? I don't know. I don't know if I heard that that part that he talked about. Oh, he did on hey, Twitter. I guess he he was on an airboat ride or something, right? Or or, or Hypel was or somebody. I thought I saw somebody with an alligator too. That's never. It's yeah. never good. I don't want to see any of our people close to alligators. All right. And speaking yeah. of alligators, it is uh, Memorial Day weekend, and I know everybody is out there on lakes and beaches and all that stuff. So be careful out there. Uh, have a good Memorial Day weekend. Obviously, remember the folks that uh, that are supposed to be remembered on uh, Memorial Day because that's what it's really all about. And uh, hang in there, and we will be back next week uh, on Nightline the morning after. Looking forward to it. Thank you for listening. Really appreciate it. Again, thank you to Scott Inez for letting us use that audio. Thank you to Sam and Roger. We will see you next week on Nightline the morning after.